Paige Buckley for the defense. May I proceed? Yes, you may. Please introduce yourself to the court, spelling your last name for the record. My name is Lydia Isaac, I S A A C S. Where are you from? Um, my parents are Singapore, but I was born and raised in Midlands. What do you do for a living? Well, um, I work as a bartender at Chinese Bar. Before that, I work at Rock to World. When did you work at Rock to World? Um, during the spring of 2012. And what did you do while you were working at Rock to World? I was a ride operator. Um, we were trained to operate all rides, but I mainly worked under the right of tenor of terror. Now, what kind of training did you have to operate the rides? Well, we were taught the basic, how to start and stop the ride. Um, that's pretty much of it. What safety training did you have at Rock the World? Well, um, we were trained if there's under any emergency incident, such as fire or thunder, we were supposed to hit on the emergency stop button. But the problem is that the button is located at different spot at every ride. Now, you mentioned that you worked the Tunnel of Terror. Can you please tell us how that ride operates? Well, um, uh, on the control panel, um, there's start button and the stop button and the blackout button. Um, it sounds simple, but it's pretty to mess up if you're distracted. Well, what do you mean it's easy to mess up if you're distracted? Well, with how the switch are positioned, it is easy to hit the wrong switch. Now, you mentioned a maintenance switch. Can you please tell us what that switch does? Well, that's the blackout mode switch. Um, the blackout mode switch is when the lights goes off and the right keep moving in the right. Well, where is this switch located in comparison to the other switches? Well, right next to the stop button. Thank you, Ms. Isaac. No further questions at this time. Any cross examination? Yes, sir. Can you hear your American prosecution? May I proceed? Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Ms. Isaacs. I just have a few questions for today. Now, as you stated on direct examination, you're a ride operator at Rock and Roll. Yes. And you work in the Tunnel of Terror. Yes. And once, one time you were working in the Tunnel of Terror, you accidentally hit blackout mode. Isn't that correct? Yeah, during my first day of operating the ride. And Bowman mentioned to you how awesome it would be if you made that blackout feature an occasional feature of the ride. Isn't that correct? Yeah, he should have said that. Now, you often ducked out from the tunnel chair when you had to go home early. Isn't that correct? Well, yeah, to get home to take up my grandmother. And Bowman would often cover your ride. Isn't that correct? Yes. Now, let's talk about the day of August 30th, Miss Isaac. Now, on August, like, August 30th, you saw a fool in the back tunnel of the tunnel chair. Isn't that correct? Correct. And you saw him fumbling through his pockets? Correct. And you saw him pull out his phone and start to type a message on it? Right. To Ms. Bowman? Well, it looks like it was Bowman. And that, so but I'm not yeah. sure. But it looked like it was Ms. Bowman. Correct? Yeah, but I'm not 100% sure. And five minutes later, Ms. Bowman actually showed up at the Tunnel of Terror. Yes. And she asked you again whether you had ever tried blackout mode. Isn't that correct? She did. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Any redirect based on that? Brief redirect, Your Honor. Ms. Isaacs, was it clear who Cameron Poole was texting by the tunnel chair arrived? No, I wasn't sure. Thank you. No further questions. Any recross based on that? No recross, Your Honor. The witness may be excused. Defense, would you like to call your second witness? Yes, Your Honor. The defense would like to call Ms. Whitney Bowman and Sam.
My dad traveled a lot for a job when I was a kid. And once my mom died of stage four cancer, his income was all we had to live off of. How old? I'm 21 years old. Ms. Bowman, I want to get right to it. Why are you here today? I have been accused for a crime that I didn't commit. I've been sitting in Breckenridge County Jail for over a year now for a robbery that Cameron Poole committed. A year of my life that I will never get back. Ms. Bowman, when did you meet Cameron Poole for the first time? Um, we had been friends growing up, and after that, when we got older, we decided to live life a little, get out of Midlands, and travel the country on an endless um, road trip. After that, we came back to Midlands, and he found himself a girlfriend, and we lost contact. I was mad, but I was happy for him. When was the next time that you saw Cameron Poole? It was about two years later, um, a couple weeks before my 21st birthday. He had surprised me on a visit. It was so nice seeing him. And then we got some catching up to do, and then we talked about our summer plans. <clears throat> what were those summer plans? I was going to return as an employee at Rock the World because the economy wasn't too, too much better that year. I didn't have a degree because I didn't go to college. And so I was happy to have a job. Cameron said he needed a job too, so I told him to apply at Rock the World. After you told Cameron to apply to Rock the World, uh, what happened next? He filled out an application and managed to pass a background check. Well, you just said the word managed. Why, was there, is there a reason why he wouldn't have passed a background check? Well, at our previous job, Cameron was accused of stealing from his ring toss screen that he worked. And I knew if a background check really happened, Buttons, the owner, would have never let him pass the background check and he would have been pressed charges against. Now, what was your job for Rock the World in the summer of 2012? Well, being a previous employee at Rock the World, I got to choose what I wanted to do. So I chose to work the rides because they were longer breaks and being outside, I got the occasional win instead of the ticket booth that I worked the previous year. And what did Cameron end up working at in that year? He chose to work the ticket booth, which I thought was weird myself because in order to work, he wasn't really what you would call a people pleaser. What was it like working with Cameron Poole during that summer? He was that same guy that I remembered. He was always asking so many questions how the park was working. Now, what were those questions, Mr. Coleman? He wanted to know how the ticket booth worked and have been working the ticket booth before the previous year, I thought it would be helpful and I let him know how it did. Now, after you explained to him the functions of the park, what did he do next? He had that grim on his face like he was up to no good. And that's when I knew that Cameron didn't pick the ticket booth by mistake. He had come up with a plan. Well, what do you mean by he came up with a plan this morning? He had a scheme so that he would be making just a little more than minimum wage that year. He was going to sell fake wristbands that he found online for the world tour price, but ring them up as the standard admission price, pocketing the extra $15. You just said fake wristbands. Um, do you know where he might have gotten those? Well, within five minutes of coming up with the plan, he found some wristbands on the internet that looked almost identical to the ones that Rock to World had been using. Now, after you learned about this plan, uh, what did you do as well? Well, I, I didn't do anything. Oh, why is that? I didn't think it was any of my business. Yeah, I didn't like the idea. But I thought if Cameron did go through with the plan, he was going to get caught. J.C. Longstreet was going to find out. And then Cameron would have to own up to his actions and take responsibility. Now, what did Cameron Poole end up doing with this plan? He went through with it. Um, at first, it was just a simple scheme. He was pocketing just a couple of the uh, wristbands. Then he got really greedy, and he started doing it more often. Okay, I want to fast forward to August 30th, 2012. Now, how did that day begin for you? 
Well, Cameron and I were walking into the park and we saw GC Long Street sitting in a ticket booth. I knew this wasn't a good sign for Cameron and I went to my ride and waited to hear from it. When was the next time you heard from Cameron? It was about, I would say, an hour later. Um, he told me to open the door for him so that he could get the box of wristbands um, because J.C. Longstreet had sent him home for the day. Why did you open the door for him? Well, I realized that my fingerprints were on the wristbands because he had been showing them to me, and I knew if J.C. Longstreet was investigating, I was going to get in trouble for something that I had no idea about. I didn't help him with his plan at all. So what, so what happened after you, you opened the door for Cameron to come inside the park? He was already there waiting for me, which I thought was really odd. So I asked him what was wrong. And what did he say? He, he said that he had been sent home and explained all about it. Now, after, he told, after he told you he was sent home, what did he do next? Um, he just entered the park and went about the plan. I want to fast forward to the evening of the, the August 30th. When was the next time that you saw Cameron Poole? Well, I saw him getting chased by Officer Thomas, which I thought was really weird because the plan was that he was going to come into the park, he was going to get the wristbands, and he was going to leave, and that was it. And seeing him, I thought he had already left the park that day. I mean, that was the plan. And all of a sudden, I saw Officer Thomas pull out a gun and shoot not only in my direction, but into an oncoming light that I was breaking. Ms. Bowman, after a gunshot was fired in your direction, what did you do? I panicked. I mean, I went to hit the emergency <coughs> stop button, but when I ducked down, I hit the wrong button by mistake, the disconnect button, and it turned the right into blackout mode. What happened after uh, this happened? What happened after you did this? Whitney Thomas got hurt. I really liked him and I didn't mean to hurt him. I made a mistake. Uh, Ms. Bowman, were you ever trained to handle any kind of situation like this where there's a shooter inside the park? No. All we were trained on was in a case of a natural disaster such as a tornado a fire and a death. Never once were we trained if there was an active shooter in the park. And that's why I try to do my best and help out the situation by turning the ride off. But like I said, I made a mistake. Thank you, Ms. Bowman. We are at this time no further questions. Cross-examination? Yes, Your Honor. Jacqueline Wolf for the prosecution. a little bit about your relationship with Cameron Poole. Okay. Now, as you mentioned on the record examination, you and Cameron go way back. Yes, we do. In fact, you traveled around the country together for three years. Yes, we did. And you actually worked at a different amusement park together before working at Rocker World. Yes, we did. But when Officer Kimball questioned you after the incident, you told him that you only knew Cameron from the park that summer. Is that correct? I was shaken up by everything. I mean, he had questioned me right after this had happened. I had a gun pointing in my direction. My head was somewhere else. I couldn't even think what my name was. And yeah, so you told him that you only knew Cameron from the park that summer. Yes, I did. And that you didn't know him that well. Is that correct? Yes, I said that. Now, I would also like to talk to you about that summer at the park. You knew that Cameron Poole was stealing money from the ticket booth, correct? Yes, I did. And you did nothing about this? Yes, like I said, I didn't think it was my business to tell, and I knew that he would, um, that J.C. Longstreet would find out sooner or later, and Cameron would have to own up to his actions. So you didn't tell anybody no. about the scheme that you knew Cameron was doing? No, I didn't. And Ms. Bowman, on August 30th, when you got to the park, as you stated, you saw J.C. Longstreet in the ticket booth. So you left Cameron to go deal with that situation. Yes, I did. And Cameron later texted you to let him in through the tunnel of terror. 
So that goes far. Yes, yes. Okay? And you were not working the Tunnel of Terror that day, were you, Ms. Bowman? No, I wasn't. You were working the mine eraser? Yes, I was. On the other end of the park? Yes, I was. And you tried multiple times throughout the day to get Miss Billy Isaacs to switch rides with you? Yes, I did. So that you could let Cameron in through the back door of the park? Yes. And when Billy Isaacs left you to go to the bathroom, you went over to the ride and let Cameron in? Yes, I did. You propped the door open? Yes. And Cameron told you that he left the wristbands in the park? Yes. And when he told you that, your heart stopped you, Spelman, didn't it? Yes, because I realized when he had been showing me the wristbands when he came up with the plan, I had been touching them to see how much they looked like the original ones, and that I was going to get in trouble for being potentially accused for the scheme when I had no, like, I wasn't a part of it at all. Yes, and so your heart stopped when you realized that your fingerprints were on those wristbands. Yes, it did. And you just left Cameron to park for the day. Yes, I did. And the next time you saw Cameron Poole was later that evening when you were working the Tunnel of Terror ride, is that correct? Yeah, I thought he had already left that day. And you saw him running through the park, followed by Officer Winston Thomas. Yes. And you heard a gunshot. Yes. But you actually told Officer Kimball when he questioned you afterward that you did not hear a gunshot. Yes, going back to what I said about how I was shaken up about everything. My head wasn't in the right place at all. And so you told the police officer investigating that you didn't hear that gunshot? No. And Ms. Bowman, you then, after they ran into the ride, put the ride on blackout mode. Is that correct? By accident, yes. And you were not sequestered in today's case. Is that correct, Ms. Bowman? Can you elaborate on that? You have been in the courtroom and have heard the testimony of all of the witnesses that have come before you. Is that correct? Yes, I have. <laughs> and you heard Mr. Longstreet take the stand and say that he saw you run in the tunnel of terror in blackout mode. Is that correct? Yes, he did. And he told you not to touch the ride? <clears throat> yes, but through the whole summer, I had taken Billy Isaac's shift, and not once did he come up to me after that and tell me not to. Billy Isaac's always had to go home and take care of her grandmother. So you had run the ride in blackout mode before? Yes, I had. But when Officer Kimball questioned you afterward, you told him you had never run the ride in that mode before. Isn't that correct, Miss Bowman? Like I said twice, that I was shaken up about the whole thing, and my mind was not in the right state. So you told him that you had never ran the ride in that mode before? Yes, I did. That mode that you hit that day, correct? By accident, yes. Which is why Officer Winston Thomas is now in a coma. Is that correct, Ms. Bowman? I never meant to hurt Officer Thomas. Like I said, he was such a good guy. And that harm fell upon him because the ride was running in blackout mode. Yes, I didn't mean to hurt him. I have no further questions for the witness at this time, Your Honor. Any redirect based on that? Briefly, Your Honor. Now, I want to talk to you just a little bit more slowly. Why did you let Karen Cole walk back into the park on August 3rd? The only reason I let him into the park was so that he could get the wristbands that were in the locker room in his locker that was right across from J.C. Longstreet's <laughs> office. Get them and leave the park, and that was it. I never thought he would go through and rob the whole and entire amusement park. Ms. Bowman, the prosecution asked you a lot of questions about the harm that fell on Officer Thomas. Was it your intention to put the bride in blackout mode at this moment, at the day? No. I mean, a gun was pointed in my direction, and I honestly just made a mistake. I, I love Officer Thomas, and he's such a good guy, and I never in my right state of mind meant to hurt him. No further questions, John. Any recross based on that? No recross, Your Honor. You may be excused. Defense, would you like to call your third and final witness? Yes, sir. The defense calls Charlotte Kuminski to the stand. Ms. Kuminski, you're wearing the right to Yes. Amy Kamanda for the defense. May I proceed? Yes, may. 
Please state your name, spelling your last name for the record. My name is Shona Kaminsky, K-A-M-I-N-S-K-Y. What is it you do for a living, Ms. Kaminsky? Well, I tried the whole college thing for a while. I went to the University of Village University College Online, and I tried to pursue a PhD in entertainment sciences, but apparently it's not really a thing, so eight years later and $145,000, here I am in Rock and Roll. Ms. Kaminsky, you drove a limo service, correct? Yes, I'm the proud owner of Corday Luxury Transportation Services. I want to talk to you a little bit about August 30th, 2012. How did that day begin for you? I was at Rock the World and I was at Rock the World in the summer of 2012, and that's when all the Cameron Pool and Ruben was in the window. You mentioned Cameron Pool. <coughs> How do you know him? I know Cameron Pool from uh, from working at from working the ticket booth at Rock the World. I never could forget him because it's one time I was trying to be slick. With the admission money, like he was putting the money somewhere in the cash register. Uh, you mentioned Rockford World. Uh, are you familiar with the park? Very familiar with the park. I go there all the time, and I know a couple. I'm, 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 uh, I'm very familiar with um, with the employees that work here. Which employees are you familiar with? J.C. Longstreet and Whitney Bowman. Tell us a bit about how you came to know Whitney Bowman. I know Lenny Bowman because she, um, she, uh, she's the ride operator over there and she makes it very fun and exciting. You mentioned that you were texted while you were waiting in your limo at Rock the World. What happened next? Well, I received this unknown message from, uh, uh, I was waiting for a long time, it almost like it was near the park closing time. And I received another message out of nowhere from the same unknown caller earlier asking me to meet them near a store by Rockwood in 15 minutes. So and what did you do? Well, I went. And who showed up? Cameron Poole. What happened once Cameron Poole stepped into your limo? He had the audacity to ask him for the privacy screen. What happened once you put up the privacy screen? Well, curiosity got the best of me, so I got the speakers on. The ones with the power of screen, he decided to make the phone calls. And I could have swore on the phone calls he was making here on the speakerphone. It sounded like he was talking to Whitney Bowman. What were Whitney Bowman and Cameron Cole talking about? Well, Cameron started talking about how he how he had threatened some woman named Hayley Floyd because she wouldn't get with the money quick enough. How did Whitney respond to this? She said she didn't want anything to do with this. After that, what happened? Well, I arrived at the arena where Cameron had asked me to drive him, and then he paid me another five hundred dollars. Then he asked me to keep quiet about anything I may have heard. Thank you. At this time, Your Honor, I have no further questions. Cross examination. Yes, Your Honor. Madison, <coughs> may I proceed? Yes, you may. Good morning, Mr. Kaminsky. I would just like to ask you a few questions. Um, you own your own transportation service, is that correct? That's true. Mm -hmm. And you go to Rock the World often, isn't that true? Mm -hmm. And one day when you went to Rock the World, you approached a ticket booth and you noticed something was different about the bracelets, isn't that true? Yes. There's going to be a lot of boards for the passes. Like bracelets, this one. And you mentioned this to the person who worked at the ticket booth. And that person was <coughs> Mr. Cameron Poole, isn't that correct? <coughs> yes, it was. And Poole mentioned to you that him and his friends were skimming some money off the top of the profits of the park, isn't that true? Is it your testimony today that you're doing? Well, I'm not going to So, it's your testimony that he did not say that to you. I know we can move it. Okay. On to my next question. Um, on the day of August 30th, you were at Rock and Roll, isn't that true? Yes, I was. And you received 
an anonymous text message telling someone to pick, asking you to pick someone up. And you later found out that that person was Cameron Poole. And when Cameron Poole got in your vehicle, you were listening to this conversation, is that true? Yeah, I was very curious about what he was talking about. Because he looked like Paris is wearing so it's kind of suspicious. And you heard Cameron Poole talking to the defendant with Bowen. It sounded like he was really like Bowen. Okay, and he said to this person, I had your knife, and I told Haley Floyd I would carve up his face and if he didn't put all the money in the bag. Isn't that correct? Yes, yes. No questions. Thank you. Any redirect based on that? No, Your Honor. They be accused. Defense, do you have any further witnesses to call? No, Your Honor. The defense requests to please or request to brief by defendant recess before closing arguments. Let's do five minutes. 